Well, greetings and welcome to the Sunday preview. We are on chapter 11. We're looking at David and how he becomes from a shepherd to a king. Now, um, Samuel, just as a review that we'll be talking about in the sermon for Sunday, Samuel was uh, uh, the last of the judges. Remember that 300 year cycle? Pastors don't talk about that very much because it's such a dark time in the history of the people of Israel where they rebelled, rebelled, rebelled against God. There was a uh, uh, rebellion and then repentance and then restoration. That cycle went on for uh, 300 years, long, long time. So Samuel is the last of the judges, although he's really a prophet not the prophets that were sent to the divided kingdom, which we'll talk about um, in two weeks, but rather a prophet who brought them out of the judge's time and into the time of the kings, first and second Samuel, first and second kings. Now, Samuel was a pretty good guy. Samuel anointed, the people wanted a king. They said, we want a king. Everybody else has a king. Why don't we have a king? So Samuel appointed King Saul. Saul was not a good king, as we heard about last week. And David was Solomon's son, who then became, the, or Samuel's son, who then became um, the king over Israel. Now, as we get back into uh, the story of David, what I'll focus on on Sunday is the anointing of David as king, even though he's a ruddy-faced, pimply-faced teenager. And then while he's still a teenager, he faces Goliath. He's been anointed as king in secret. He hasn't become the king yet. So. Um, David was anointed as king, Saul was the acting king, and so that's the time in which David went up against Goliath. So Saul, after David killed Goliath in the, in the, in the time period after what I'm going to be talking about on Sunday, Saul, Saul, Saul saw that God's presence was with David, and so he kind of brought him in close. He brought him into his own court. David was well-liked and he was successful. He was still not king yet because Saul was the king. David even married Saul's daughter and had a really close friendship with Jonathan, Saul's son, um, and he's right in there with the king. The problem is that David's popularity and success started taking away from Saul. And so Saul got very angry and jealous. In fact, several times Saul tried to kill David. So David ran, this is all before David became king. David fled for his life and hid in the wilderness while Saul's fear and irrational behavior grew. Saul's thirst, uh, bloodthirstiness for David's life even grew to, grew to the point that it became an obsession which blinded him, blinded Saul to the fact that the Philistine armies were continuing to uh, invade and attack Saul and they prevailed against Saul, and Saul's sons were killed. Saul is a very tragic figure in the life of the people of Israel. They wanted a king, they got one, he went bad, his sons are killed because he's not paying attention to what's going on around him, but instead he's obsessed with killing David. Um, it was 14 years that David um, the, the, a, a time period between the time David was anointed and the time that he became king over all of Israel. And David became known very quickly for his military, civil, and uh, spiritual leadership. He conquered back the city of Jerusalem, 
made it the capital city and brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem that had been stolen by the Philistines, David recaptured it and brought it back to Jerusalem. So David was home at last. Things were going well for him, even though the Bathsheba stuff, we'll talk about that on Monday with David and Bathsheba. And what he wants to do is he wants to build a house, a temple for God, but instead God told David, I don't want you to build a temple for me. I am going to make a house of God out of you, out of your lineage, out of your eternal dynasty that will save the people from their sins. Of course, Jesus comes from the line, the lineage of David. David wanted to make a, a place for God to dwell. God says, I will dwell with my people through you eventually through the person of Jesus. So over time, um, through the lineage of David, God became one of us in Jesus, set up the kingdom of God, and the rest is history. So enjoy the sermon on Sunday, enjoy the, the chapter that we are reading, and there's a lot of stuff there in the, in the, in the story of David the king. Chapter 11, watch worship on Sunday or come join with us and on Monday, when there's more to the story, we'll talk about David and Bathsheba and then the psalm that David uh, prays when the son dies. That's all more to the story. That will be on Monday. <clears throat> so good to be with you. You take care. I will see you again. Bye-bye.